It is my privilege to present the following program that was inspired by the way American businesses and organizations have responded to the events of September 11th. It's part of a special series produced by Heartbeat of America called Keeping America Strong. Each program spotlights a business or organization that is helping to do exactly that, keep America strong. Having served in the United States Navy for many years, I fully appreciate the important role small and middle-sized businesses play in the very fabric of our country, and I salute the professionals who lead these companies and thus keep America strong. They are the very backbone of our free enterprise system, and today on this program, you will meet the individuals behind one such organization. I'll be back later in the program to introduce the Keeping America Strong Award. And now, let's learn more about the organization we are honoring today. Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future, an organization that truly is the heartbeat of America. In the 20th century, a group of future Americans led by William Shatner ventured out into the universe. The challenge? To take the American spirit and courage to the final frontier of man, outer space. It was an exciting time on television, but it was only a fantasy. Meanwhile, here on the planet Earth in the 21st century, a new challenge has emerged. And this one's for real. It's the challenge to unite America and to keep our economy and our country moving forward. This has inspired Heartbeat of America to launch a special series entitled Keeping America Strong. In the 20th century, William Shatner took us off on a voyage into the universe to experience what life is like on other planets. But now, here in the 21st century, he is back here on our own planet to experience with us new technologies and new ways of life that are taking place right here on Earth. It's all part of a new series that we call Keeping America Strong. And as you know, part of Keeping America Strong is keeping corporate America strong and moving forward, especially in the economic downturn of today. Our guest does exactly that by providing businesses of all types and sizes with training and consulting that focus on the four fundamentals of business, sales, management, customer service, and quality improvement. His name is Richard Tyler, and we're awfully proud to have him with us today. By the way, he's written a book called Smart Business Strategies, which has been hailed as one of the best books ever written for small business marketing. Mr. Tyler, nice to have you here. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I know one of the key things that you do is you, you train and you present seminars for companies and small businesses. Right. Give me a little bit of idea of what goes on at these training seminars. Well, we offer a multitude of different types of training programs and education programs, but they're all wrapped around a commitment to excellence, a philosophy that in order to be the very best at what you do, you have to make gradual, constant improvements. The world is going to be changing. It always changes. That's the thing that, that, that never ends up changing, is that change is always going to be part of it. So by being committed to excellence and making improvements in everything you do daily, you keep your business strong. It's been my philosophy that I've learned over the years that the difference between average and good is just a little bit. And the difference between good and excellent is just a little bit more. We help companies and individuals get that just a little bit more. And you do it through these seminars? We do it through the seminars, absolutely. Is that all there is? No, we offer consulting services, we offer profile services, we assist companies in hiring, but the primary methods that we introduce our philosophies to companies through are through our education programs or seminars, through my keynote speaking and addressing large audiences and so forth, and our consulting services. It's interesting because uh, I was talking with you a little while ago, when my idea of a seminar mm -hmm. was where someone gets up and addresses a crowd of people for a couple of hours or maybe a day and then they go home that's the seminar mm -hmm. but that's not your kind of seminar is it no not really 
that's where it all begins. And there are programs out there that are very good programs that start with a three or four or two hour, and those are motivational programs. And there's nothing wrong with motivation. We all need motivation. We have to get excited. But motivation should be the energy and the emotion that is a catalyst to more action. Programs that are much longer. You can't possibly teach the philosophies of sales or leadership or management in three or four hours. Yeah. It's, it, it just doesn't work. Talk to me about your uh, consulting services. What, when a company brings you in to consult with them, why are they bringing you in and what do you do? Well, there's two reasons primarily why companies bring us in to consult. One is because they're not doing very well. Pretty obvious. Yeah, and they're looking to turn that around and they're not sure how to do that. Right. The second reason is they're doing very well and they want to get an outside expert opinion on how to continue to make that a replicatable system that they can build upon more and more and more. We see things from a different perspective than any company would. You know, we're not in that forest with them, so we can sit back and we can see ways that they can improve, ways that they can tweak their business, and ways that their customers get better benefits from the products and services that they offer. Well, so the, that's why they bring us in. The advantage is you also have worked with other companies that may have been their competitors uh, or other companies that do, do the same thing, and you know how they're doing it and why they're succeeding. Absolutely. You, you know, you're kind of like a spy almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we do is we look at the philosophies that work no matter what the industry is. Right. Whether it's a competitive company, we look at the principles that create success. And those are universal. You know, every company that we come into often thinks that their situation is very unique. It's something totally different that's never been had before. But the fact of the matter is, is there may be unique players, and it may be a unique position in time, but the problems have existed since the beginning of time. When you become, when you, when you serve as a consultant to a company, though, you really kind of come inside the company and, and almost become part of the team for an extended period of time. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. We really do become part of the team. I, Doug, you hit the nail right on the head there. Because when we come in and consult, it's not a one-day come in and take a look at what's happening. We go in and we become part of the corporate culture. We examine the company from top to bottom. Now, of course, it depends specifically on what the company is asking us to do. We may be advising them on a launch of a product. We may be advising them on the best way to structure their compensation plan. We may be advising them how to create leadership within their organization. We may be advising them on strategic uh, sales planning, a strategic business development, or we may be advising them on all of those all of things. Them. Yeah, right. And how long would a typical uh, consulting assignment last? Well, our consulting is often wrapped in with training, and training is often wrapped in with consulting. But what we do is long-term program development and long-term consulting. Because to, if you really want to get involved and inculcated into the corporate culture, you can't be there for a day. So most of our programs, in a minimum, are 12 months, and many of them go on for years. We have clients that have been with us 15 years, and we're there constantly assisting them in all of the things that they do. Well, if you're there that long, obviously, they're realizing a benefit of your presence. Absolutely. You wouldn't be there. You right. would hope that that, that would be the case. Yeah. Not only that, let me, one other thing. In addition to all of these, sir, you also have the products, the, the book, right? Uh -huh. Let's, uh, let me hold up this book, by the way, for our, you may have, you may recognize this, this has been on the market for, uh, for a while. If you go into to bookstores, especially in the business sections, uh, this is a book you would see very prominently displayed. Again, this has been hailed as one of the best books for, uh, for small businesses ever written uh, on marketing, primarily. Is that right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the book. What's it about? Well, you know, this is a small business marketing book. And Normally, that's not where I would have started. I would have started putting together a book on sales. But the first book that came out, why I drove to that one first, back in 96 was the first edition of this book, mm -hmm. uh, was because entrepreneurs were, were budding everywhere. Small businesses were opening, and people needed assistance. When I first got into business many years ago, I looked at the types of books that were out there for marketing and promoting a business. And there are tons of them. There are tons of them, but right. most of them are written in technical jargon and they're, you know, a foot thick. And some of them are written by academic people who have not experienced those things. This is written in a straightforward, on-the-street style, exactly the way I learned it. And it's got practical applications in it. So in each and every chapter, an individual learns a lesson. They take a test or a quiz to see how, they, how well they learned that lesson within the book, and then they move on to the next piece. 
it, so it works for them right away. Simple things. It's been my experience that what happens with individuals, if it's too big or too technical, the entrepreneur who's excited, who's motivated, who wants to make things happen, well, they set it aside. They say, well, I'll get to that later on. So we specifically designed it in a way that would excite the entrepreneur, and they wouldn't want to put it down. And even though this book was published in 96, it's just as viable today as it was then? It's absolutely just as viable. As a matter of fact, we're coming out with the second edition or the second printing of the book, and it should be out, and it will be out in 2004. And in that, we're addressing something that we didn't address when this book came out, is the tremendous opportunities that exist in the Internet marketing end of the business, how to promote your business through the Internet, how to grow your business, how to make that another revenue channel for your business. And so that will be addressed in there. And of course, we've created an audio version of the product as well. And the audio version is a kick. I mean, you'd love to listen to the audio version. It's like, it's like a radio program. Yeah, it's very drama. entertaining. Yeah, yeah. You know, I listen to so many books over the years, regular books when I was right. driving around when I first started out. Right. And audio books helped me get from one place to another place. So it, the time passed quickly. And then when I listened to most business books, although the content was superb, the delivery wasn't very exciting and it certainly wasn't entertaining. In this book, we made it entertaining. It's just exactly like a radio program that you sit and listen to. There are characters, there are things going on. The person can sit back and laugh at things while they're learning. I had a kick doing it. Fascinating. Very, very interesting. We're discussing the very interesting story of Richard Tyler International. And our guest today is Richard Tyler himself. He's the president and the CEO of the company. The company is headquartered in Houston, Texas. But Mr. Tyler, I believe, travels all over the country. You're on the road a lot, aren't you? I'm on the road an awful lot. And literally, we teach all over the world. Interesting. What's the, what's the way a company generally begins bringing you, by bringing you in? There are a lot of different ways that organizations could bring us in. As an example, uh, you could be at a seminar, you could be at a, um, a convention, right. and I might be the keynote speaker. Right. And I could be talking about market dominance or philosophy on commitment to excellence, and afterwards you say, boy, I really like something that that fellow said, I want to talk to him, and a company would contact us that way. Now, we could be brought in to work with a company on either our training programs or our consulting services or both. So there's not one that is more predominant than the other. It just depends on the client's needs. And if, if it's a training program, do you have a number of training programs? Yes, we do. We cover all the areas of business. We cover sales, management, leadership, customer service, quality improvement, and a multitude of smaller programs. And they're all different that. programs? Or Absolutely. is it all in one? No, they're, they're all different programs. But because oh. of the nature of the way we do business with clients yeah. and there being long-term relationships, it's not uncommon that we create for lack of a better term, Tyler University within a company. And literally, we could start with one program and then we filter through all areas of the company teaching, if we teach sales to one group, we may teach leadership and management skills, we may also teach uh, quality service improvement because they all come together. But one of the primary differences that makes our program so exciting is that most corporations they have a lot of different people coming in and conducting education programs. They do some in-house themselves, and they may use four or five different organizations to do them. Well, the fact of the matter is, is those philosophies are not congruent. So what you really do in many cases is confuse the people within the organization of what to do. Now, it's been my experience that when people are confused, they do nothing. So that's not the best way to get success, and it's certainly not the best way to get a commitment to excellence. Because our programs all started from the core philosophy I've developed in sales over 30 years, we built the management program, we built the leadership program, we built the quality improvement, the customer service, and the myriad of other programs on the fundamental sales philosophies that exist. Because I think sales isn't a business skill. It's a life skill. And if you use the skills, everything we're doing is sales. Relationships are sales, because all sales in its purest essence is, is the ability to effectively communicate an idea to someone so that they can evaluate the position and decide what's right for them. That's what selling is. So a father or a mother raising a child is selling. The child, when the child is first born, is selling. That child is crying and says, hey, come and feed me. Well, you know, that child is selling, and an action is created from it because the child has effectively communicated its need. That's what we do. You know, I'm prompted to ask you, I don't go into depth right now, but Tyler University, you just mentioned it. 
you're not the only guy who does this, right? No, absolutely. I mean, you've got a huge team of people, obviously. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, just to establish that. I, I want to get specific information. But I on, love doing it. On, uh, no, I, hey, you're good at it. It's pretty obvious. Your sales immersion program. Define that for me, because that sounds rather intriguing. Well, you take the name and, and you look at what immersion means. I found that over the years, people really learn two ways. They learn through what I call spaced interval repetition, which is a small amount of information given to them, and then you come back later on and give a little bit more and build on that philosophy. And that's a fine way to learn. But the challenge with that methodology is it takes a long time to start seeing significant benefits. Right. What we've developed is an immersion program. And in immersion programs, literally, the person is immersed in the philosophies that we're teaching. So let's take our sales program. It's an incredibly intense cr program. You have to really make a commitment. You have to want to improve. Seven days. We start at 8 o'clock in the morning. Class generally ends at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Sometimes with homework and assignments, people are working till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And, and who typically attends this? Oh, this is great. Because you'd think that the person that would typically attend would be a frontline beginning salesperson. Sure. That's not the case at all. Because remember, we're becoming part of a corporate culture. We teach new language, we teach methodologies, and it has to be driven from the top down. As a matter of fact, if we can't get involvement from the top levels of management, we won't take the training program with that company. So in a typical class, we may have people from different companies, and we could have a CEO, we could have a VP of sales, a VP of marketing, we might have someone from the legal team, we might have someone from product development or several people from product development. Because remember what I said earlier, sales is a life skill. Most businesses set up three different companies. They have a sales company, they have an executive branch, and they have a service branch. Well, then you get three branches pulling in different uh, directions with their own agendas. It's not that they want to do that, it's just they don't know any other way. By us creating a common language, a common philosophy, a replicatable system, and letting everybody know that to achieve their goals, everyone has to be on the same page, doing different things for the team, right. but on the same page, we create success much, much faster. You know, you, you just mentioned something interesting. You said sometimes you have people from other companies. Yeah. In, it could be two or three companies. How does that work? I mean, I, if you're training a company, yeah. you're, you're talking confidential information, uh -huh. right? You're teaching them how to develop and sell their product. Uh -huh. How can they open up if there are people from other companies there? Well, a couple of different things happen. First of all, we would never have a company from the same industry in the Not same program. Of course. Absolutely. Okay. But the other thing that happens is that the spirit of what happens in the training process, people get caught up into. And why? Now, we do it both ways. If a company has really highly classified information, and we have a number of clients that way, we can do the program in-house specifically for them, and then there's no one else involved. Right. But I really like doing the program with people from different organizations in there for this reason. What happens is you get perspectives from different people in different companies. We also get to mix up the teams with the way that we present skill sets. They have a very creative section and they also have a very specific section on their own product development. So by mixing these things up, you allow people to relax, forget their internal politics, and concentrate on what they're there for, skill improvement. Now this sales immersion program goes on for some seven days. It's long, 12 hours a day at a time. Give me an idea of the kind of results that you get out of this. What do you hear from the companies after you've done this? Well, let me put it to you simply. We wouldn't have relationships that lasted multiple years if the companies weren't getting results. Right. So companies stay with us a long time. We get business results, and I'll share with you those in just a moment, but we also get tremendous personal results. Individuals that have things that happen to them personally that they get so excited about. One fellow called me up one time, and he said, yeah, everything you told me that worked in business beautifully. He said, but I applied those same principles about communication and the way to ask questions and how to motivate people to my Little League baseball team. And he said, we went from the cellar to the top. He said, I never understood that everything I do is sales. Now, of course, we have many companies that we've created billions of dollars in sales for. We have one leader in the automotive industry, as an example. We cover business in all types of industries. But just in the automotive industry, we, have, we work with the leader in quick loop business in the world. Okay. And that particular company wanted to improve their over base sales by just a few dollars. We helped them improve those significantly. They wanted a dollar or two increase. Well, we had some stores... You improve, mean per sale? Yeah, per sale. Right. We had some improve as much as 5, 10, 15, 
$22 was the highest one. Now, you say, even if it was only $2, think about that. $2 times 50 customers a day times 2,000 stores times 365 days a year, that's a lot of increased revenue. We have customers that will say, we did a million dollar sale we wouldn't have done if we hadn't spoken to you. We got a piece of business we've been working on for a year, and we got it in a week. So tremendous success. So you get a, a big response then. We and get a great this, response. You do this all over the country and abroad as well? Yes, absolutely. We do it in Europe. We'll does, do it in does, Asia. Do the programs you've developed for American companies work in, in foreign cultures? You know, that's an excellent question. When I first grew up in sales, when I started in sales, I grew up in the north, and I was, went to school down in the south. When I first started honing my skills, folks would say to me, well, that may work up north, but it doesn't Not work in the here. south. Exactly. And, of course, it worked. And then when I went to the West Coast, people would say, well, that may work on the East Coast, but it doesn't work in the West. And then when I went to Europe, they said, well, that may work in the United States, but it doesn't work here in Europe. And, of course, it did. And that went to Asia and throughout the rest of the world. The reason these philosophies work, without regard to the country, is that they're all based on human behavior, the principles that we all want to be motivated by. The deepest human desire is to feel loved, wanted, needed, and important. And every human being makes their decision for only two reasons, the desire to gain pleasure or profit or the desire to avoid pain or loss. Those are universal. It has nothing to do with culture, ethnic background, religion. It just is the way we're wired. There are lots of these programs out there, right. seminar tra you know, sales training seminars, programs. What do you think makes yours so unique? Well, there's a few things that makes our, make ours unique. One is that they're long term. We become part of the culture of the organization. And it's not uncommon for someone to call us up and say, hey, I was with a client yesterday, and here's what happened. People within the company will share things with us they wouldn't share with their own superiors because they feel confident that we'll assist them and help them along the process. That doesn't exist in many organizations. The second thing is, is that we truly are committed to excellence ourselves. We constantly improve our programs. When a customer is satisfied, we're still looking to make the program even better. And we don't do a couple of our programs. We believe that success, there's no short-term ways to get there. You have to move continually, and it's got to be a long-term basis. You're very interesting indeed. Thank you. You are tuned to Heartbeat of America. So stay with us as Heartbeat of America presents its special edition, Keeping America Strong. We're discussing the very interesting story of Richard Tyler International with Richard Tyler himself. He is the president and CEO of the company, which is based in Houston, Texas. And Mr. Tyler, I'm prompted to ask you, Richard, uh, where does all of this expertise come from to be able to teach companies all of these various sales techniques and everything else? Does it come from books, from schooling, or does it come from practical street experience or somewhere else? You know, that's an excellent question. And it really comes from schooling, but it's not the schooling that you would traditionally think of. It's the on-the-street style of schooling. In other words, it's an educated process because education comes from the Latin word educus, which means to draw out from within. And I learned the philosophies that I teach on the street from going into places and presenting products and not liking when I didn't get a yes. Not that I got angry with the customer. As what, a salesperson? As a salesperson, absolutely. And uh, if I didn't make a sale, I wanted to know why. And I wrote down what I said and what I didn't say and, and why didn't the sale go on. And then I changed the presentation. Well, 30 years ago when I started that, I didn't realize that that was going to be the foundation that was going to lead to the types of training that we do today. So that's where all of the core philosophies come from. And then the other philosophies were built upon that to improve sales. We had to make management better to raise revenue. We had to make better leaders to raise revenue. We had to improve customer service to raise revenue. So everything we do in training and education and consulting is designed to increase more revenue. You know, it's obvious. You paid attention to what you were doing. Where did the, the, the idea come to form Richard Tyler International and to go into this business? Well, I'd have to go back 25 years or so ago. And at that point in time, as I became very good at selling, I decided that I would begin to use the skills to teach other people within various industries that I was working in at the time because they didn't know how to make more money. So I helped them along, and then I got bit with the bug by teaching. And so once that happened, once I mastered an industry, I moved on to another one. Twenty-five years ago, after about four or five years in business, uh, working for other people, I decided I want to start my own training company. 
What I lacked at the time was a broad experience in a lot of industries. So then for the next 10 years, I specifically went into various different types of industries to test my philosophies, hone the principles, with the goal in mind to start an international training and consulting firm. And we have just a brief amount of time left, but today the company consists of how many people? Well, what we do is we have individuals all over the world who are consultants, so there are dozens of them. There are. And I know that among other things, you have the book, your new book's coming out, and then there's conversations that you're a part of that's about to come out, a series of books. Tell me about that briefly. It's really exciting because the publisher has contacted experts in the field of faith and success and happiness and fitness and, and business and all types of areas and I'm proud to be in there with other leading experts like Brian Tracy and Ken Blanchard and Dr. Schuler, uh, talking about in a conversational form we're interviewed about our philosophies in each of the areas in the series of books that's coming out. First one comes out in uh, December of this year. Sounds like it's going to be a very interesting series. Oh, it really is. Listen, you're a fascinating individual, and obviously you're, you have a marked impact on the companies you go talk to because they keep bringing you back. So it's been a treat to meet you, and thank you so much, and uh, keep at it. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. We have been watching the operations of an organization which is doing its part to keep America strong, and we've been learning from its leaders about what they're doing to help move our country forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now, let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now, it's my honor to present our Keeping America Strong Award to Richard Tyler, the President and CEO of Richard Tyler International of Houston, Texas, for the outstanding work he is doing to help keep America strong and keep keeping our industry and our corporations moving forward. Thank you so much. This is so beautiful. On behalf of all of the people at Richard Tyler International and all the people who are our students and clients all over the world, we accept this very graciously. Richard, Thank you again. Best wishes. Congratulations for earning the Keeping America Strong Award, which honors innovators and leaders like you who are the heartbeat of America. Our thanks to retired Rear Admiral Kevin Delaney for taking part in the presentation of the Keeping America Strong Award, the award that salutes small to middle-sized organizations who are helping to move America forward. For more information about this company and the many services it offers, visit their websites. They have two, www.richardtyler.com and www.tylertraining.com. That's it for Heartbeat of America's special edition, Keeping America Strong. Now for a final word from William Shatner. Well, that's it for this edition of Heartbeat of America. I'm William Shatner. Thanks for watching.